With so many new changes done to the caves in 1.17, what is the best way to collect ores? Today we'll be looking at new strategies to obtain resources in these deep caves and look at what challenges survival players will have to overcome. With the new world height starting at 320 blocks up and going all the way down to negative 64. This makes the underground area twice as deep with the new areas where ores will generate in as well as new obstacles from underwater aquifers as well as lava lakes and new harder to break stone types. Today we're going to be looking at all these different challenges for the survival player and how to overcome them. Sea level is still around Y level 64, but the real difference occurs when you go underground. As you go down the first 64 blocks, you run into the typical blocks you see, like the stone, the diorite, the andesite, the granite, also got the dirt, the gravels. But as you go down, right as you get to the Y level 0, it transitions over into some new types of blocks. This is called the deep slate, and it is a new stone type that exists below Y level 0. So if we blow up this new block, you can see it's pretty high blast resistance. Let's do the same for stone to compare it. So the blast resistance is very similar to the stone block. And let's try out the end stone. Yeah, you can see end stone is quite a bit stronger. Now blast resistance is different than the hardness. And that is essentially how hard it is for the player to mine up. So I got a normal netherite pickaxe. Let's go ahead and compare stone with the deep slate. That took just under two seconds to mine up. And let's try this one. That took a little over four seconds. So it's about twice as hard to mine up. That makes it have a similar hardness as endstone. Also notice when you mine up the stone, it turns into cobblestone. You mine up the deep slate, it turns into cobbled deep slate. And you can use the cobbled deep slate just like you can use blackstone or cobblestone in making tools and furnaces and brewing stands. So now I got the efficiency five and also silk touch and I got the haste two. Let's go ahead and mine this one. Let's mine some stone. That took less than a second because you can mine up stone with haste two and efficiency five instantly. Let's go ahead and try out the deep slate. That almost took about two seconds to mine up. So yeah, it's a lot harder and you can't instant mine it. Now you can use any type of pickaxe to mine this and get the item, which will get you the cobbled deep slate. Using silk touch will give you the normal deep slate block. And this can be smelted and crafted to form all the different variations, including the polished, the tile, the brick variation, and also the uh, chiseled, which does look like a shulker box that's being opened up, which kind of goes with the theme of all the other chiseled blocks, which is they look like different mobs, like this is the piglin snout, wither skeleton, wither creeper, maybe the guardian eye, and this one probably doesn't represent anything. So all the deep slate saved up during your mining trips can be used to make these nice looking blocks. Now besides collecting the ores for the materials, these blocks also look pretty cool. And you might try to collect the slate versions used in a build. Especially like the iron one, it looks like it could be used for making cool looking paths. Now they did come out with slate versions for copper, coal, and emeralds. Probably because they don't generate down that far into the world. But it would be nice if there was those variations for when they add the sliders in again so we can modify our world generation. If you guys don't remember back in the day, you could choose like how much ore of each type you want in and what wide level they would spawn in. But they did say they would try to bring it back. You can also like customize how many dungeons you want, all sorts of things. Now besides that block, we also got another block down here. Instead of having like gravel, dirt, andesite, granite, or diorite, those have all been removed, but we do have the tough block that can be found in patches down here. And if we blow up this block, we can see how tough it really is. It has a similar blast resistance as the stone and deep slate. So let's mine it, and you can see it mines very similar to that of a stone. So if you have haste 2 and efficiency 5, you can instant mine it. The new deep slab as well as the tough block can be converted into moss by bone milling a moss block near them. So mining in this area will be very tough, and not only is this block tough to break, but also they have a deep slate variation of all the ores, and these things are twice as hard to mine up than normal ones which makes them almost hard to mine up as a mob spawner. You can just see how difficult it is even with a netherite pickaxe. You might be thinking, why even come this low to mine ores? Why don't you just mine at Y level zero? So you can avoid this really tough block and all the tough ore variations. Well, as we know in the past, rare ores have been near the bottom of the world. But with the new deeper caves, they have changed the way that ores will generate. This being the 1.16 way it was, and this being the current iteration. And you can see diamonds are way down here. 
and the thickness means that there is more of them the lower you go down and this is all the way down at y level negative 64. so to find the most diamonds you have to go down here this is also where you'll find the most redstone but unlike in the past where if you would mine around about this level here you got a chance of finding all the different types of ores and you also had the highest chance of finding those ores. That has all changed with 1.17. Now we have different areas to find different ores. The best for diamonds is down here. So same for redstone. But the new best area for lapis is around Y level 0. You can see gold is now at negative 64. Iron is at Y level 32. The new copper ore is at 48. Coal is actually up in the mountains. So if you find a very high peak, you can get a lot more ore right in here. There's also some anticipation for the mountains for the emeralds. As the higher up in the mountain you go, the more likely to find emeralds and iron ore. Now it's still possible to snag all the different types of ores if we hit right around at this Y level here, which is about Y level 4. Now in the past we had lava lakes to worry about anything below Y level 10, and that's normally why we didn't mine at this level. But now these big lava lakes have been moved down to occupy the bottom 10 layers of the world. So from negative 64 up to negative 54. So now at Y level 4 we are free of running into any of those large lakes. So at Y level 1, this should be our best luck to find all the variations of ores. And we can also mine through the stone, which is a lot easier to mine than the deep slate. This is one block above the deep slate, so this is as high as it goes, and then we just go up one more block. That way we won't happen to find any deep slate variations of the ores, which are twice as hard to mine up. And we can still find ores in the walls and the ceilings, which are a little bit higher, being as closer to that Y level 4, which has a slightly higher chance of getting the coppers and the coal. Now you can still run into the andesite granite diorite, so you can get those blocks if you're looking for them. You also can run into dirt and gravel at this Y level. But the biggest downside is that since you're trying to go after all the different types of ores, you end up not getting the largest amounts of any particular one. And we can even see the prominent layers in which ores generate at just by removing all the blocks except for ores inside of a chunk. You can see up here we got the coal and as we go down the coal is going to get less common. Other things become more common like copper and iron. You can see there's big clumps of copper right here. So for the peak area for coal is around 94. Copper is around 48. And iron is around Y level 32. As we move down, we can see we see less of copper and now we have some other ores. And instead of just finding a few hidden lapises throughout going downwards, right here at Y level 0 is where the peak lapis layer is. And as we go lower than 0, around negative 16 is the peak for gold ore. But it's also less likely to be found if it's exposed to an open cave, meaning that digging for it is the best way to get it. Another block that has this property is the diamonds, so you're less likely to find them in a cave and more likely to find them when you're digging. And only once you get to the very bottom of the world do you have the highest chance of finding these. Redstone also has the highest chance down here, but it's a lot more frequent than diamonds. You can see there's quite a bit of it. And throughout all of these negative levels, there is small blobs of iron that can be found. So if you want diamonds and redstone, it's definitely worth mining way down here rather than at Y level 1. So mining just above the bedrock layer will give you the best chance of finding diamonds while still avoiding bedrock from interrupting any of the diamond generation. Even with efficiency 5, it's pretty slow mining down here. Now, even though diamonds are more common the lower you go, you really don't want to mine below Y level negative 54 because you'll run into those lava lakes. So you can mine at this Y level, and then if you come across any lava lakes, you can just fill them in as you go across them. Very similar to mining at Y level 10 in the past. Now, if you are going to use a beacon you have to remember that beacons can only give you effects down 50 blocks so if you want to dig out the very bottom of the world get the mirror beacon in around y level 14 that way it can go down 50 blocks but it can also go up an infinite distance but you still need to give it sky access so it means you have to remove all the blocks from the bottom of the world where you have your beacon all the way to the surface of the world and don't worry about water because the beacon can go through water now if you're mining above the lava lakes, you can put this up around Y level negative 4, which would be a little bit easier to clear out the area for the beacon because there's some stone up there. And you can also just put down the first tier of the beacon to get that haste 1 to make it a little bit faster to clear out the rest of the area for the beacon. But still, that is a lot of mining just to find some diamonds. So is there better ways of mining in 1.17?
Now because the deep slate is so tough to mine, we can use a tunnel bore to clear out a decent sized area through this. Now even though this has the mining speed of like end stone, it has a blast resistance of stone. That means it's actually easier to blow it up than it is to mine it. So here we have a TNT duper just like we used in our tunnel bore for the ancient debris. But Borkun made this design where you can drop it onto some ancient debris rather than having a second flying machine to time the explosions in midair. Now this doesn't blow up as big as area as like the ancient debris farm that we designed using a bunch of tunnel bores and a collection system. But this works pretty good for one player. So if go ahead and just click that you'll see it dupes TNT, drops it over there and it's going to remove a bunch of blocks exposing ores. And you just come through with your pickaxe and you can mine these guys up. I'll link his original design down in the description. Pretty easy to use. And it exposes a large area where if you were strip mining, you would only see six blocks, two on each side and one up and down. And it's a little bit slow for it to operate, but you can put a couple of these side by side so that you can run them. And we're running this at the same Y level that we'd be strip mining. We do have to be careful about lava that's down at this level as underneath the TNT because it could ignite it. And because of that, I would run this two blocks higher than Y level negative 54. So like the lava would be here and just put it up here. Now quite a few ores can be found at the surface level here. This includes coal, copper, iron, and in the mountain biomes, emeralds can also be found. Because of this, if you find any exposed stone like this, it's very easy to find quite a bit of different types of ores. Got some copper right there. We can take advantage of this and find like emerald ore on the surface. Now in the mountains, they are going to update them, so you might not be able to find it so easily. But even if you cannot find exposed stone, you can always dig away the dirt above the stone to expose any ores that can spawn up this high. Now I like to call this surface mining and you can find copper, iron, coal, and emeralds even. And it's not too difficult because the dirt instant mines with efficiency 5, you don't even need to have a beacon in order to clear a lot of dirt and expose the stone. Otherwise you'd have to put down a beacon and then move it as you move. You also can do this without exposing yourself to the surface so you can do this at night. I just looked for a nice flat area on top of a mountain. That way when you remove away the dirt there's not that much climbing up and down you have to do. But you could do this with any biome, you just wouldn't have a chance of getting emeralds. With the new massive caves, it really makes sense to go caving rather than like strip mining. Because the goal of this 1.17 version, the caves and cliffs update, is to try to kind of remove these big areas with no caves and add in many variations of caves. This will give you tons of surface area in order to find the types of ores you're looking for. In this one view right here, you can see a wide variety of different ores, including diamonds. The only problem is the caves don't normally look like this. I actually have the night vision effect. And if I remove that, you can see what they actually look like. It's pretty dark and it's even darker for you guys. So I definitely think that night vision potion is going to be a must. There is a version of it which will last quite a long time. You can also bring night vision arrows to have a one minute timer. You can get these automatically with my raid farm and villager gift farm. So if you hit yourself with it, it will give you one minute worth of night vision. That way you can just hold more night vision versus having potions. Now the new combat snapshots, they do have normal drinkable potions stacking to 16, which would make a big difference. Alternatively, you could just bring the ingredients needed to make night vision and then brew them up as you need them. Now you still have to deal with all the mobs that are in these dark caves. But since there is so much cave area, the mobs are kind of spread out. If you do F3 plus B, you can kind of see there's mob there, there. You know, they're not really congregated in one area. So it's very possible to walk large areas without seeing any mobs. And with all this exposed area, you can go around and collect all the resources that you need. It definitely makes caving feel more like caving and less like some kind of task you have to do just by strip mining. You have to be worried about mobs, you have to be worried about your night vision potion. Now lapis, gold, and diamonds are less often to be found in caves that are exposed to air. This means you can find them at normal rates by looking in caves that are full of water. The water breathing potion and even night vision can help you in this circumstance. And you can see there is some gold ore right there. And by taking advantage of this, you can find these ores at their normal rates and you don't have to do any strip mining or tunnel boring. There's gold, there's lapis, here are some diamonds. It might help to also bring along some doors so you can replenish your air if you don't have a lot of potions. 
<laughs> the zombie tried to get to me, but he's sinking. Nice thing about this, you don't have to worry about any mobs attacking you in this water, which makes it relatively peaceful. You just, you just have to worry about these magma. And you can also crouch in these magma bubble columns to replenish your air. Having an aqua affinity helmet is going to be useful too. There are special seeds that have repeating structure generation. And you can find mine shafts that repeat themselves over and over again. It's pretty crazy stuff. But definitely the new caves makes the repetition so much crazier because of the different sizes that they can form. Now there is a lot of wonkiness in this snapshot as well. Some of the caves don't generate properly. There's also these cracks which go very deep into the ground. A lot thinner, but it also go quite deep. And in this world where the caves repeat themselves, the cracks also repeat themselves. These cracks are quite shallow, but you can see they're repeating along this side. It looks a bit chaotic over here, where there's just tons of these cracks all over top of each other. Here's an example of a deep crack, which if you fall down it, you go all the way down here. You could find some caves this way. We did find some odd stuff like this dungeon that had dripstone going through it. We also found this dripstone that's sticking out of the ground. The very tight and repeating caves. The new mine shafts going throughout the caves. And the new cracks that they introduce are extremely deep. And we found this one, which if you fell in it, you would fall over 120 blocks before hitting the ground. Lava pools were also still being surrounded by stone. And lava lakes were being cut into by caves, leaving behind this odd looking lava. There's also really short pillars like these guys here. And the mine shafts held up by chain look like some kind of parkour obstacle. You can also find the silverfish blocks deep underground underneath of a mountain. But these silverfish don't go into these new type of blocks. Now overall mining has become more early game. As the main reason you mine them up is to get the different types of ingots and resources from the blocks. And if you're trying to get like tons of coal you go for like a wither skeleton farm. For iron you go for an iron golem farm. For copper you make a drowned copper farm. For gold you make a pigman gold farm. For lapis you trade with villagers or you make like my AFK hero of the village raid farm. Redstone you make a witch farm or my raid farm. Emeralds you can also get from a raid farm. Quartz you get from piglin bartering. When it comes to diamonds you don't actually get the diamond resource from any other mob but you can get diamond armor from villager trading. Or you can get diamond pieces off of mobs. So there is alternative ways to get these ores. Now ancient debris is one of the ores that you can't get really any other way. But will there really be a reason to go mining other than early game? There is definitely a lot more they're going to add into the caves. Like we know the wardens coming in here with the deep dark biome. And we still got quite a bit more to look forward to with this update. And the developers are always looking for feedback. But I think the warden mob will probably give players a reason to go down deep. Even if they have automatic farms for most of the stuff. And by giving players alternative of ways to collect resources this lets everybody be able to play unique game styles if you're wondering how old worlds will look when they update to the new cave update as well as other common questions to do with this check out the video at link down below and if you'd like to see all the different types of 1.17 farms i've already designed check out my simple automatic farm playlist don't forget to leave a like on this video as well as share it with others i would like to thank you guys for watching i'll see you guys in the next one Bye bye